queremos entrar, ya estamos viejos. Y aquí la mera es la mera. ¿O no, camaradas? Sí. If we asked someone to name the most merciless narcotics cartel in Mexico, they would surely fumble. Branded by decades of brutality, these cartels appear to be racing to the top to claim the spot for the most inhuman organized criminals. Even though each cartel has its territories and trades, some dare to overstep their boundary and venture into the lands of their rivals in an effort to conquer them. Whether they succeed or not is another story. Sinaloa Cartel and Jalisco New Generation Cartel, or CJNG, are two of the most notable cartels, with decades of history in narcotics dealings, human trafficking, Nappings and murders of the innocent, herded by some of the best in their line. These two cartels have been in a clash for as long as one can remember. Often, these cartels capture someone from the rival gang and inflict pain upon them before taking their lives. A recent video circulating on the internet shows a brutal method the CJNG applied on a Sinaloa member to subject him to pain. Come join us as we try to divulge some of the information on what went wrong and why the cartel member decided to torture a rival gang member with such ruthlessness. So how did the war between these two cartels begin? The origin of the Sinaloa dates back to the 1960s. The state of Sinaloa was known as a hotbed for cultivating narcotics. A few families grew and sold them locally, but soon they began to traffic them across the border to the United States. Their leader, Pedro Aviles Perez, was gunned down by law enforcement agencies in 1978. But before that, he trained and raised an army who would continue his trade in illegal dealings. A few leaders of this new cartel created the Guadalajara Cartel, which went on to be divided up into two different factions, one of which was the Sinaloa Cartel. It started as a small faction, but later became one of the most feared and successful narcotics cartels in Mexico. Their structure is more complicated uh, and perhaps more uh, usable for adaptation than the structure of other criminal groups. They were highly organized and had a hierarchy that would allow them to lose a few members from their ranks, but still continue operating without major damage. On the other hand, the CJNG was a splinter group of the Millennio Cartel. After the higher authorities of Millennia were arrested, the cartel divided into two different factions, with some lieutenants taking up leadership roles to carry on the legacy. One of the factions was La Resistencia, and the other was Los Torquidos. The two factions ended up in a brawl, and Los Torquidos shook hands with Los Zetas to wipe out their rival. They eventually won the war, and the winning members created today's CJNG cartel. They are known to be one of the most brutal gangs, who act without emotions and kill mindlessly to exert domination, or just to prove a point. Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generacion, CJNG, is the single criminal organization most responsible for these deaths on both sides of the border. The, the rivalry between the Sinaloa cartel and the CJNG is an age-old tale. Even though they had been in a short-term partnership to defeat other small cartels, their sworn enemies, who have been at war over territories and trade ever since. The kingpin of the Sinaloa cartel, El Chapo, is currently doing his time behind bars in a U.S. prison, but it didn't stop the cartel from keeping up its operations. The grapevines say that he might actually be a frontman only, and the true power lies in the hands of someone else within the ranks. Ismael Zambada Garcia, also known as El Mayo, is widely believed to be the real leader of the Sinaloa cartel. He has a bounty of $15 million on his head, as the U.S. authorities are doing everything in their power to catch him and bring an end to this cartel. But his whereabouts are still unknown. No. CJNG is led by the infamous Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, commonly known as El Mencho. The cartel has seen significant growth under his reign and has created an army more merciless than any other criminal organization in the world. His brutalities had reached such an intolerable level that U.S. authorities put a hefty bounty on his head, trying their best to capture him and contain his madness. If the DEA is offering $10 million for information leading to the arrest of the Mexican drug kingpin known as El Mencho. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel took the fight to the next level, shooting down a military helicopter, helicopter with a rocket-propelled grenade, killing people, six of them, last week. However, El Mencho has recently been out of sight and many people suspect that he might not be alive anymore, with some sources claiming that he might be sick or busy with some other activities within the cartel. But this doesn't seem to prevent CJNG from flourishing. If anything, they've been more active in narcotics dealings 
waging war against rival cartels and turning the lives of general people into a living hell. The Sinaloa cartel officially declared war against CJNG. Their primary goal was to capture Nayarit, a state in western Mexico. The trafficking routes of that area were under CJNG's control, and the Sinaloa wanted to change that. The Sinaloa cartel called it Operation MZ and took an oath to remove any signs of CJNG in the targeted area. They also threatened the government officials in a video. Heads will roll said the armed men in a spine-chilling threat in the video. Only a week prior to this announcement, CJNG reportedly captured and took the lives of three narcotics traffickers after detaining them in Zacatecas. As usual, they recorded and published a detailed video of their brutal process. In the video, the three men sat on the floor without any clothes. Their hands were tied in their laps and their eyes were blindfolded in a way that covered their entire face. They suspected that the three victims were connected with the men of El Chapo and were trafficking narcotics for the Sinaloa cartel. The camera rolled as the CJNG members interrogated the three victims. They were later brutalized and killed. Despite the Sinaloa cartel having some success in gunfights, the CJNG showed no signs of surrender. A video released on the internet in 2021 by the CJNG shook the world. Although the video wasn't available everywhere, it gathered enough views to create a buzz. This was the first time the CJNG had chosen a different, violent technique to inflict pain upon members of their rival cartel. However, for CJNG, this has been the norm. The cartel has a special tactic to inform the world of their activities and to announce the dangers that they bring to the table. They capture detailed videos of interrogations and torture more often and post them frequently on social media. The Sinaloa cartel does the same. On top of that, the videos posted by CJNG tend to be more graphic. So what happened in the video in question? The clip showed two members of the Sinaloa cartel, hands tied behind, kneeling on the ground before the CJNG members began the recording. In the beginning of the video, one of the CJNG members used hedge clippers to remove his fingers. The man sat there and took all the pain. He didn't resist too much despite being exposed to perhaps the worst pain of his life. In the next sequence of the video, the CJNG member dropped a knife on the ground it's possible that he had just used the knife on the second victim. He then brought out a spoon. Devoid of all humanity, he used it on the victim's eye. As impossible as it might sound, the gruesome view proved what the audience was witnessing was indeed happening. It was pretty obvious that this person might never see again. Reportedly, the CJNG members let these two victims live and made them fight. Their pain and helplessness became a source of entertainment for them. It gave them a reason to celebrate the fact that they had captured and inflicted pain on members of the rival cartel, one which is perhaps the biggest cartel of the country. The video created a division among the audience. Some claimed that the video was indeed fabricated because the victims in the video didn't make much noise. A counter-argument pointed out that these cartel members are trained to be brutal from a very young age, and they probably got desensitized to pain long ago. Another viewer pointed out that despite CJNG being one of the most technologically advanced cartels, they used backdated cameras to record these videos, and this could very well mean that they were fake, as no one in those videos could be identified properly. However, another audience member posted a counter-argument that they perhaps wanted to shoot and post with devices that couldn't be tracked. These devices are very old, justifying the poor video and picture quality. At this point, only the cartels know if the videos are real or if they're just fabricating them to instill fear in the general public and rival cartels, especially the ones who want to take them over. Want to know the latest news on the war? In June 2023, the cartel members engaged in a two-week-long fight in Chiapas to take control of the Guatemala trafficking routes, which ended up taking the lives of 60 innocent people. Thousands of locals fled the area in fear of their lives. Both cartels used heavy weapons and armored vehicles. They didn't care much about the locals and destroyed everything in their path. Despite law enforcement officials being present in the area, they couldn't salvage much. In recent years, there have been many more gunfights between the Sinaloa cartel and the CJNG, and the Sinaloa cartel seems to be winning most of them, including the latest Zacatecas shootout against CJNG. The four-day battle affected and hampered the lives of the locals, as many had to flee to save their lives. The violence in this country continues to spread, and the state of Zacatecas has become the latest epicenter. There's a multi-way fight for it, but the heavyweights are a division of the Sinaloa cartel and Jalisco new generation. Some of the civilians came back after the fight was over and looked back at the damage and what could have happened 
if they hadn't fled. The bullet came in through the door. This is where my wife cooks. Thanks to God she wasn't cooking then. Running with my sister and my father-in-law, we fled without a change of clothes to Juarez to seek asylum in the U.S. because of the violence. My sister was shot in the hand. Despite continuous pushbacks, CJNG is not backing off and apparently wishes to capture territories and narcotics dealings currently owned by the Sinaloa cartel. They say what goes around comes around. CJNG started a war against most rival cartels, and they had to pay the price with the lives of their own men. In February 2021, the United Cartel, previously known as La Resistencia, posted a video of a CJNG member being brutalized before being murdered. Authorities and analysts identified him as a lieutenant of CJNG, El Venado, or The Deer. The attack took place near the borders between Michoacan and Jalisco. The United members also destroyed CJNG's vehicles. It was also suspected that another high-ranking member of the CJNG was killed in this attack. These two gangs had been at war over territory for a few months at this point. Early in January 2021, CJNG members threatened to harm the locals if they didn't help the cartel. In fact, the cartel used the locals as human shields so that the law enforcement agencies wouldn't be able to reach them. Needless to say, this attack on one of their lieutenants definitely affected the cartel. The blow ensured momentary peace for the locals, but the cartel wars are far from coming to an end. In 2023, CJNG repeated history. Following the brutal path they'd carved years ago, they captured another top official of the Sinaloa cartel and inflicted the same torture methods on him. The captured member was identified as Commander Fatso, or Comandante Gordo in Spanish. The video shows him sitting on the ground without a shirt, his hands tied with deep wounds in his eye sockets. His eyes had been removed from his head. The leader had reportedly come across CJNG near the town of Valparaiso. The gang didn't miss the chance. They quickly captured him, took his eyes out, and put him to rest. Another picture circulating online showed his state moments before he met his tragic fate. In that picture, the Sinaloa leader was sitting on a stool with his hands tied. He was then taken to one of CJNG's chambers, where the members took his life after putting him through substantial pain and then disposed of the body, possibly in pieces. Apart from these unusual tales of revenge, gunfights and kidnappings of gang members by their rival cartels are very common and happen more often in Mexico than you'd think. The law enforcement authorities at this point have closed their eyes and left the cartel to do whatever they want to each other. They're trying their best to ensure the safety of the locals, yet thousands of people are losing their lives. In 2022, law enforcement and government officials were targeted during a war between the rival gangs. The Sinaloa cartel and the CJNG went into a direct clash in Zacatecas and ended up killing state representatives. Judge Roberto Elias Martinez was fired at and hit in the head just outside his home. What's upsetting is that he never received a threat and was unfortunately caught in the middle of the gang war. Later that day, members of the Sinaloa cartel drove a truck into a local prison gate, attempting to break it open and free their men. No criminals escaped, but law enforcement officials were injured trying to control the situation. Soon afterwards, the members of the cartel raised roadblocks in the streets and burned many vehicles. The catastrophe was monumental, and the locals were frightened beyond measure. They only pray that they don't become casualties of this meaningless war. Thousands evacuate the battle areas and leave their lives behind. Sometimes they stay away for a few weeks or a few months, and in some cases, they never get to return. The Mexican government has been cooperative with the U.S. officials and DEA and helped to capture some of the biggest kingpins of Mexican cartels. However, in most other cases, they have either remained silent or refused to take responsibility for their inaction. In June 2023, the president of Mexico, Andreas Manuel Lopez Obrador, said that the U.S. authorities lacked enough information to comment on the strength of the Mexican narcotics cartels. The DEA had claimed that the two biggest cartels, Sinaloa and CJNG, have around 45,000 members and narcotics brokers in more than 100 countries. This shows how powerful they've become and gives the law enforcement agencies a hint at what they're preparing to battle in the upcoming days. However, Obrador refused to believe in these numbers. No, they don't have good information, said the president to answer the question of a journalist. While this information doesn't justify pointing fingers at the Mexican authorities directly, the current situation demands that they rise up and take control of things before irreparable damages occur within their borders. 
think law enforcement will manage to end the brutalities of the cartels in Mexico? How do you think a serious war between the cartels could affect the country? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video to show your support, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell for notifications of future uploads. See you soon with the next exciting story.